Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Boyega Adedeji. I'm so glad to welcome you to this week's edition of LeaderView. I hope your week has been great. I'm so glad for that. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we bless your name for this afternoon, for this day. We thank you for your blessings on us. We thank you, Lord God, for your preservation. We thank you because we are where we are and who we are today because of your faithfulness. Father, we are so grateful because you've given us this opportunity again to learn at your feet. I ask, oh God, that you inspire us so that we, could, we can become better leaders in our generations. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I bless God for this opportunity given to me by God to be in this position to connect with you and to be a blessing to you. There's something that God has been cooking up for a while that I believe is the right food for our thoughts as leaders in this time, in this season, in this dispensation. Don't forget we began some weeks ago the series that is titled The Leadership Trip to Genesis. And we've been looking at a couple of things from the book of Genesis. The Lord has been opening us up to... to, to uh, the principles for effectiveness in leadership. So today we want to continue that series and we'll be uh, looking very uh, quickly as the Lord gives us the grace into the book of Genesis chapter 9 and I will read from verse 1 to verse 7. Genesis chapter 9 from verse 1 to verse 7. Let me read from here. So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the heart. So God blessed Noah and his sons and blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and feed the earth. By the way, today we want to look at man, the leader in the class of God. And I don't want you to struggle with that title. I want us to together. Uh, understand what the Lord has to share with us today. Man, the leader in the class of God. Now, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, God said, Be fruitful. God said to Noah and his sons, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the head. Now, the question some of us could ask is, What manner of man is God expecting to fill the head? Now, why did God emphasize the need for man to feed the earth? What was the need for that? Now, what was the intention of God? Why was this instruction given to Noah and not given to some animals? Why did God speak this kind of word to man? Why did he say be fruitful? Why did he say multiply? Why did he say feed the earth? Now, let's continue. If God had stopped there, we would have said, okay, this, this statement, this blessing from God, is not too different from the ones that God gave to uh, the animals. Now, let's see verse 2. And the fear of you, and I want you to know that, and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the head, on every bed of the hair, on all that move on the head, and on all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hand. They are given into your hand. In a nutshell, all these things that I, God, has made, I have handed them over to you. Now, because I have given all these things unto you, it is therefore important that you become fruitful. It is important that you become productive. It is important that you bring good result, that you yield the good harvest. I have committed this much to you. Be fruitful. Don't just be fruitful. Multiply. 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 And haven't multiplied feed the head. That is the intention of God. The question that is important for us to ask is what kind of man did God originally intended that should feed the head? And should there be a deviation from that originality of the man to a situation where man is now a victim of his circumstances, where man is oppressed and depressed by other men, 
where the plants and the animals are ruling the men that God ordained to have dominion over all things, should there have been a devia deviation of some kind, it's important at such a time as this to note where we deviated so that we can return to our original, original, original identity in God. Now God said, be fruitful, multiply, feed the heads. And he said, the dread of you, the fear of you, it's in all the animals. All these things I've created, they will respect you. They will submit to your authority. In fact, I have given all of them into your hands. Let's go to verse 3 very quickly. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs, all things. The provisions that you require, I have given them to you. I have committed so much resources into your hands. Now see verse 4. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. Surely for your life blood, I will demand a reckoning from the hand of every beast. I will require it, and from the hand of man, from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of man. Now, I'm sure you understand that what goes on in our societies today is far from ideal. People are maimed, people are killed at, at the will of men. You get somebody offended instead of the person even telling you, I'm so angry with you, the person kills, the person stabs, the person shoots. That's the kind of society that we have now. But see the original, the original ideal, the original intention of God and what God has established. He said, the lifeblood of a man, I will require it from any animal or any man that takes it. See verse 6. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man, and as for you, Noah, as for you his sons, be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the head and multiply in it. Now, our focus is on verse 6. At the portion of verse 7, God said to Noah, he said, Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. Now the question you could have asked is, okay, why was God so particular about man? Now that also reminds me the question that King David, the, the king of the ancient Israel, asked at a time. He said, what is man that you are mindful of him? And that's in the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 8, you can start from verse 1 to verse 9. What is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him. There was a time he said, you have given all things, that all your works, you've committed them into his hands. You put all things under his feet, under his subjection. What is man? Now, it's important that we understand that God's investment on man was not uh, an arbitrary investment, was not an aimless investment. It was because of the intention of God for that investment. God had a plan. God had an original intention, which we could call a strategic intent in the heart of God. There was something God intended on the earth. God didn't want a earth that he will have to come to do everything. He wants a earth or an earth that his will is enforced through man. God wanted to rule the earth through man. And so to do that, God made man in his image. And that's what uh, verse 6 tells us. He says, whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. That's very simple and that's very, that's very direct. We do not need too much of uh, talk for us to understand this. The reason why if you kill a man, you will be killed by man, is because the man that you have killed is made in the image of God. The question is, what is the image of God? Another way we can put that is, what is the nature of God? God, we know, is spirit. According to the book of John, chapter 4, for God is spirit. God is spirit. In fact, the Bible says, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Another way we can put it is this. Those who seek to reflect his glory on the earth, those who seek to honor him, those who seek to represent him, they must do it spiritually and truthfully. 
They must do it sincerely and spiritually. God is spirit and those who worship him, those who represent him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. The implication of this is this. The image of God is a spiritual image. And it talks about the nature of God, which also is the reason for the authority, the power of God. Now, for man to demonstrate the capacity of God on the earth, God didn't just wish him well, God made him after himself. So when God was making man, God was not looking at trees, God was not looking at the moon, God was not looking at the animals, even though they were created before he made man, what God looked at before he made man and what God looked at why he was making man was himself. So God had himself in front of himself and he was making man to look like himself, to be like himself, to function like himself. So the image of God was the, if we want to put it, the prototype or the, the, the sample that was used to make man, the mode. God made man in his own image. So man began as a, an, as a being after the word of God. And we must also understand that God was not just a spirit, and God was not just spirit, God was the leader and the leading spirit. He was a leading spirit. He was the spirit that led. And so a man who is made in the image of God, whose blood is required from other man, other animal or animals that takes his life is made after the order of God. So God made man a leader in his class. So if you want to compare yourself with uh, a leader and then it should be God, you should see yourself in the mirror of God. So the more you see God, the more you understand yourself as a leader. God is the mirror of your leadership. You can understand yourself you can understand why you think the way you think. You can understand why you talk the way you talk when you consider God and when you behold God. God is your vision. God is your destiny. It's important you understand this. That is why for most believers, the emphasis is on Christ-likeness. You want to become like Christ because the point is this. Christ is the Son of God and Christ is God. So, the more you become like God, the more you become your original personality, your original self, the leading self that was made after the word of God. And so, if you are struggling to reconcile yourself as a leader today, I want to encourage you to begin a search for God, to begin a thirst and a hunger for God, begin to yearn for God, because if you can know God, you can know yourself. Now, let me help you to understand this. A plane, an aeroplane, is made in the image of birds, and a submarine is made in the image of fishes. And so, when a submarine is clueless and does not know who it is, it's important for that submarine to go in search, to go for a research into the fish kingdom. If uh, an aeroplane is worried, why do I have wings like this? Why do I fly in the sky? Why am I not on the ground? The aeroplane should just take a cue from the, the best of the air. I behave as the best that are made in their image. So you and I have been made in the image of God. And that is why it is very, very important that you appreciate and you respect another man that you see. Some men have deviated from the original plan of God for them. In spite of that, they are still made in the image of God. Now, for so many of us that believe that Adam fell from grass to grace, I mean from grace to grass, and he fell from glory, and he began a journey in error. Now, for most of us, we believe that God cursed Adam. But did you notice that even though God cursed Adam, even though God said, from ground you were made, you will return to this, when Noah, after Noah offered the sacrifice to God, immediately after the flood, God still emphasized the fact that all things, as he said it to him, in, to, uh, to his forefather, Adam, all things has been put under him, just as all things were put under Adam. We didn't lose it. It's our nature. It's God's nature. 
You didn't lose your nature simply because you disowned your father. You were made in the image of God. It's important for you to however know that even though you've been made in the image of God, you cannot function in the image of God except you go back to God. You reconcile your way back to God. You reconcile your leadership back to God kind of leadership so that you don't function after the order of the man or of the... Uh, of the angel, Lucifer, that adopted you as a father so that you function after the order of God, the one who created you and who created the Lucifer. So it's important that your leadership is not expected to be after the principles of Lucifer, after the principles of this world, it's expected to be after the principles of God's kingdom. And that is why Jesus Christ, when he began to raise a, a people for God, to raise them after the order that God originally intended them, the men that we call the 12 apostles of the Lamb, what Jesus told them was very clear. He said, they asked him, why do you speak parables to the people? Why is it that you speak plainly with us? Why do you speak parables with them? Why do you use proverbs? Why do you use some idioms, some, some, some figures of speech to communicate? Why were you not playing with the people? And Jesus told him, you see, he said it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them it is not given. The point is this. It is given to you to understand how God lives in his kingdom. The essence of that is that you might replicate the manner of God's leadership on the head. So the will of God is that it be done on the head as it is done in heaven. And God intends to use you and to use myself for that purpose. The only way for us to be back to our originality as leaders in the class of God is for us to submit to the authority of God and we become, uh, we, we be mentored as it were by God through Christ Jesus. I hope we understand that. You are a leader in the class of God. You are not a leader in the class of beasts, animals, or plants. You are not a leader in the class of some fallen agents that roam around the street calling themselves demons or the gods of iron, the gods of stone, the gods of this and that. You have been made a leader in the class of God and you are expected to function in the class of God. So at is done by God in heaven, you do it on earth. Do you know what Jesus said when they asked him, certain questions. He said, as I hear my father, I judge. My judgment is true. What I see my father do, I do. I see God do it in the spirit, I replicate it on the head. The things I see God do in his kingdom, I do it in the kingdoms that he has committed into my hands. You've been made king and priest unto God by Jesus Christ and it's important you submit yourself to Jesus Christ for a process of development so that you can be taught again the way God works. You see, there is a way God leads. There is a way God conducts his business. Don't forget, you have been made in his image and if you must function, you must function like him. You can function like other things or other people. You can function like other spirits. You can function only after the order of God because it was God that became the mold for your making. And so he has sent Jesus Christ as the second mold for your remaking, for your regeneration, for your development. Submit yourself to Jesus. Submit to his authority. He is the greatest leader that we know as men. And God sent him to be the firstborn among many brethren. I am so excited for the opportunity given to me by God to know Jesus as my Lord and to submit to the authority of Christ over my head. And as such, I am restored by him as a leader on the head. So as I see him do, I do. I do not struggle. My leadership follows his pattern. The things I do are the things I have seen him do. I see him and then I replicate same. Don't forget, if you've been made in the image of God, they are not the other word we can use for that is that you've been made in a copy of God. And so you must see for you to replicate. You are a replica of God's nature. It's about replication. It's about imitation. It's about you imitating God. God walk this and this way, then I walk. God says this and these things. I say my judgment is true. God bless you. My name is Boye Gadeneji. It's been a joy uh, connecting with you today in this edition of Leaderview. It has been God. It has been good. And I believe you have been blessed. I expect to connect with you again next week on Wednesday. 
I want you to stay blessed, stay refreshed, stay connected to Christ, stay connected to God. Function in the order that God has raised you up a leader. Don't function in a lesser order. Don't forget the Bible also says we have been, we have been made, we, have been, uh, we are seated in, uh, with Christ in heavenly places. So where he is, we are. Apostle John also said in the book of 1 John, he said, as he is, so are we in this world. I'm so glad that as he is, I am. I have been made a leader in his class, in his order. And you have been made. Walk in that reality and you will have a testimony for that experience, for that life that you are choosing. God bless you. My name is Boyga DDG. You've been watching. You've been listening to Leader View. Stay blessed. Stay connected with Christ. Hallelujah.